Welcome to the third week of Yasudhya and Yoga. As I said in the previous video, if you haven't done week one yet, I recommend that you go and look at that. That explains why and what. These videos are not going to have much in the way of explanation of why we're doing this. So please go back. This is the first one that you've seen. Go back and start at week one. It's not necessarily to do these all in order, but there's no reason not to. So today we're going to start with full yogi breathing, as I think every week starts off with. So sit nice and tall, cross-legged, and you know the routine. We're going to do it seven times. I'm going to count breaths with my left hand, and then I, or I time the breaths with my left hand, and I count the breaths with my right hand. I've got a handy cuckoo clock so I can count the seconds. So it'll be an inhale on the count of eight. Hold for eight without pressure in the neck. Hold by using the stomach and then exhale on the count of eight. And we're going to do that for seven cycles. So you can do it on your own or you can do it with me. You'll probably hear me inhale and exhale. That's how you'll know. So I'm going to start with just a normal inhale and a normal exhale and then it starts. After seven rounds, just breathe normally a little bit, just to relax, especially if you become lightheaded. The next one is called cleansing breathing. This one is a little bit different. This one we do in standing. Legs spread a little. We're going to inhale deeply as in full yoga breathing. And then as we exhale, we're going to pinch our lips to our teeth and try to make the smallest slot possible so that we have to force the air out. But we're going to do the forcing in short bursts. It'll be audible, it'll be loud, and it's going to be a little bit like this. So, you know, you have to screw up your face a little bit so it feels kind of odd, but don't worry about that. Do this total of three times. So I'll start with a normal inhale, normal exhale, deep yogi inhale, Now 
until everything is out. And a full inhale. And full inhale. And then breathe normally. After doing that about three times, I get lightheaded. And if I'm going to do it again, I take a good pause. I'm only going to demonstrate three times. If you want to do more, do it in sets of three. So three, and then a pause, and three, and a pause. It's a good exercise to do. In the book, it even talks about epidemics, flu epidemics. I, I'm only going to recite what it says in the book. Which says that's a very efficient way to rid yourself of flu, to keep the lungs strong. So take that as you may. The next one is called nerve strengthening breathing. We do that in standing. I'll just demonstrate it once and then we can do it. Again, we do it three times. I'm going to inhale, raise the arms, palms up to shoulder height. We're going to hold our breath, make fists, pull them back quickly. And then as if we're resisting against something, we're gonna slowly extend our arms again, pull them back, slowly extend, pull back third time, slowly extend. Only then do we exhale. As we exhale, we round down, come close to the floor and then we inhale, stand up, palms up, and we start the cycle again. And we do that entire thing again three times. So now let's start it for real. Starting standing, again, normal inhale, normal exhale, just to calm things down. And then inhale deeply. Hold the breath. And again, if you're lightheaded, stop, take a pause, because you may be lightheaded after a couple of rounds of that. The next one is Vakrasana, the second form. The first one, we were stretching the back of the legs. We were sitting straight, remember that? Now we're going to cross the right leg over the left. The left armpit tries to cover the knee, and then the arm pushes that knee past the center line. At the same time, the right hand is in behind. The left hand tries to get down to the floor and we turn just to the side, not twisting all the way around, just to the side. Keep pushing that leg over. Release, gentle counter twist, and extend the right leg, take the left one back, put it over. And again, if over doesn't work, you can do this just as well with the foot staying on that side. How do you know if, I can, if you can put your leg over? If the foot goes over and both sit bones are still on the ground, then you're fine doing it this way. If to do this, you've got to lift one sit bone off the ground, keep the foot on the inside. The right armpit covers the le left knee, 
hand wants to get to the floor, left hand in behind, turn to the side. Keep pushing that knee across the midline. Release. Gentle counter twist. This is quite a powerful twist for the lower back because we're pushing that knee actively across. Stretch out the left leg, then the right. Put the foot in the position that works for you. Cover the knee with your armpit, pull it aside. Release, slight counter twist. So the hand that goes behind, you'd want to keep it on your fingers. You put the palm on the ground, sort of jams the shoulder, plus then we tend to lean back. You want to sit vertically here. That's why the first version was to stretch the hamstring and make it supple enough that we can sit straight with at least one leg outstretched. Do it on this side again. Left hand on the fingertips, pull the knee across, sit tall, look to the side. And release, slight counter twist. Now the next exercise is again a breathing exercise and this is the one why it said when you got to this video on YouTube that you should have an empty stomach. Empty stomach means you could have a cup of coffee or you could have had a meal three or four hours before. Do not do this after you know fried bacon and um, sausage and egg breakfast. It's not going to work if you've eaten something if you've had a major meal in the past three hours, please wait, because this exercise is not going to do you any good. This is best done on a very empty stomach. It's my morning, I've had a cup of coffee so far, and that's it. This is a hard one to explain, it's an even harder one to learn. We're separating muscles that normally work together, muscles in the stomach, so muscles of contraction and muscles of breathing. This is why it's very hard to do this exercise without inhaling. You'll try it a few times and you'll probably see what I mean. I'm going to demonstrate again. Normal inhale, normal exhale. I'm going to inhale then as my hands come to my knees. Slight bend, slight rounding of my back. And I'm going to fully exhale. So I've exhaled till my belly is now all the way back to my spine. And I'm going to let my stomach go. I'm still, however, exhale. My ribs are still lifting. My diaphragm is up, but I'm going to let the stomach go and it's going to fall forward without inhaling. That's the separation of the muscular action from what we normally associate with that. That's part of this exercise. The other part of this exercise is a huge massage of the internal organs, movement of the lymph, most yoga poses have something to do with massaging the internal organs and getting the lymph going. This is a huge one for that. So again, I'll demonstrate one more time and then we're going to do it three times. I'm going to inhale normally, exhale normally, get into the posture, knees bent, hands on knees, lower back slightly rounded. Deep inhale, deep exhale. Now hold it and let the belly go. I relax and I inhale and come back up. So the entire time I wasn't breathing, I was on empty. So my lungs were empty. And you'll notice that as you exhale, the ribs go up, the diaphragm goes up, the stomach goes back, and then on empty, when you release, 
some of your ribs really expand upwards. The diaphragm really goes up. That's why it's called Uriyana Bandha or upward flying pose or up, upward flying hold. Bandha is one of the core holds. Uriyana is upward flying. So we're going to do it again. Normal inhale. Normal exhale. Bend the knees, hands on knees, round the lower back. Deep inhale. Deep exhale. And now let it go. You should notice that when you let the stomach muscles go, it actually sucks in even farther because the ribs now are expanding and the diaphragm is going up. Anyway, if, 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 if this isn't working, you can go and watch somebody else's video, see if they explain it better. Some people take off their shirts, they've got better bodies than I do. So I'm not gonna take off my shirt and demonstrate. Anyway, inhale again. Exhale. Yeah, I know, yoga people are not supposed to be vain. Hands on knees, round your lower back. Deep inhale, exhale. As always, if you feel a little bit winded, take a, take a bit of a break. So I have this stool here next to me as a prop. You may or may not need it. I'm going to demonstrate the next pose without the prop, and then I'll demonstrate a version that you can do with the prop if this is difficult for you. You may want to be near a wall for balance. This is a balance pose, but sometimes we can work either on balance or we can work on, stretch, on stretching. This pose does both. But if balance is difficult and you want to use a wall, go ahead. But if you are at a wall, when you're in the pose, I would recommend taking your fingers off the wall and testing your balance a little bit. So if you're doing the full pose, find something to look at, focus on, so that you can stand on one foot. Reach down, grab the big toe, and then stand nice and tall. You might want to stretch out an arm for balance anyways, and then we extend this leg. How straight it goes depends on the flexibility of your hamstring. You want to be able to get to the point where you feel a stretch in the hamstring. If you cannot feel a stretch here, then you're going to do the variant. First, I'm going to demonstrate the other side, and then I'll demonstrate the variant. We do this two times in total, so my one time is the standard, the second time is going to be the variant. So again, very important to find something to focus on that helps with balance. So look at an unmoving point, stand tall. Very important that the standing leg is straight and then kick out the leg that you're stretching. Try to bring the hip back a little and then release come down. So if that is not working because hamstrings are very tight or balance is limiting or both, that's where you get a prop. A stool works if it's high enough. My, my kitchen counter works very nicely because we've got a bar set up next to it so it's even higher than that. But I'm not going to move the camera over. I'm just going to demonstrate here. I've got that on it to make it a little bit higher. But this process is the same. I'm going to lift up my leg, I'm going to put it on there, I'm going to straighten it. Now here I may or may not be getting a stretch in my hamstring because I'm more flexible than this setup uh, forces me to be. I can lean forward, put both hands on my shin perhaps, but then again pull that hip back and focus on your toes. Standing leg is nice and straight. The balance is lost here, that's okay. We'll have other poses in other weeks for balance. Or what you can always do, 
because you've got flexibility of tie, you just do this for your balance. Stand nice and tall, and then put your leg on your stool or on your bar or whatever is available. So we do this pose twice each side. balance portion of this version is going to be standing holding your toe. Stand nice and straight. Good tall like there's a string coming out the top of your head pulling you up. Weight is on your toes and on your heels evenly. Hips are centered over your foot and then release. Good. And we get to Ardha Salavasa, Salavasana, which is half locust pose. Lying on our stomachs, fists next to our hips, chin planted firmly on the ground. Push your shoulders into the ground to lift your torso so that your body is not necessarily pressing on the floor. It's the arms next to you, like two rails that are holding you there. And Arda means half, Shalabhasana means locust pose. So we're not going to do a full locust, just a half locust. So we lift one leg as high as it goes. Put it down, lift the opposite leg. And put it down. Take a moment's pause if you need it. And repeat. Left leg. Put it down. Right leg. And down again, short pause, and then the last time, left leg. Put it down, right leg. And put it down. Now if your lower back has been made sore by that, slide to a child's pose briefly. And the last pose that I'm going to demonstrate, the two after that are again meditation for five minutes and corpse pose or shavasana for five minutes. I'm obviously not going to demonstrate those because it's just one is sitting in silence for five minutes, the other one is lying down in silence for five minutes. As explained in the first video, you do those on your own. And I'm going to stop the video after we've done Halasana, which is plow pose. Now I'm going to demonstrate this one. So the traditional plow pose is you go up into shoulder stand and then you bend your hips or you bend it at, at the hips until your toes come to the floor. Again, intense pressure on the back of the neck. So I don't do that. You have two options. First option is you lie down and just again, the sort of lazy candlestick legs go overhead. I'm going to go one step further. I can demonstrate this without crashing into my couch. I guess you need to be able to see this. I'm going to lift up 
and my feet are going to come down to the floor, my hands come to my feet, and then I round my upper back. Again, there's no pressure on my neck here, so my neck is safe and I can hang out. I can hold on to my toes, and my shoulders are then supporting my neck. If I can't get to my toes, I can leave my toes floating in the air, or, and, but then I should have my hands by my back so that I don't roll down. I'm going to stay here for a few moments. In yin yoga, this is called snail pose. And this, I find at least, is a lot safer for the neck than is the traditional pretty severe plow pose. And I'm going to slowly come out of it. Now, I can't bring my feet down slowly because I've got a couch there. But you, please, use your core muscles and keep your legs straight and let them slowly come down to the floor. And then squeeze your knees in. And then we do it one more time. And then very slowly, with complete control, legs as straight as you can. Try not to let your lower back pop up as your feet come down to the floor. And then squeezing your knees. And then come to seated. So your next pose is going to be meditation, five minutes and then corpse pose for five minutes. I'm gonna sign off now and wish you a nice week with these exercises and we'll see you again for the new set next Sunday. Namaste.